Hello and welcome to a mini series on filtration with DSLR Video Shooter. My name is Caleb Pike and in these next couple of videos we're going to be talking about almost all things filtration. There's a lot to cover, I'm not going to be able to cover everything, but this is going to get you started with the basics of filtration for video. So we're gonna do several different things. We're gonna look at different sizes, types, uses of filters, the, the main ones, there's a lot out there. And then we're gonna look in another video uh, and talk about map boxes, different types of map boxes, which one you should get, what features to look for, and a bunch of other accessories and tools that are useful for filtration. We're also gonna talk about why you would use filters as opposed to doing things in post. And then we're also gonna look at specific brands and you know when to go cheap, when not to go cheap, things like that. I do wanna start with a disclaimer and say that everything you see here is either gear that I have purchased myself or is gear that has been loaned to me for a set amount of time. I wasn't paid by Tiffin, I wasn't paid by Genesis Tech to talk about this gear. This is just stuff that I believe is the top notch. So don't get frazzled and crazy in the comments saying that I was paid to do this. This is just for you guys and some information that I've learned and uh, wanted to share with you guys. So the first thing we need to talk about is why even use filters? Why use filters and you can do a lot of this stuff in post? And the reason for that is it is very difficult to get these aesthetic looks and um, these effects in post, especially on cameras like these, the GH4 or a DSLR like a Canon DSLR, even cameras like the uh, Canon Cinema series or Sony's you know, FS line. So it's very difficult to do and some things are just straight up impossible. There's a lot of great uses for filters and it can really help you in production and do a lot for your image. And as you see on the table here, I've got a lot of square filters and you might be wondering, why use square filters instead of round filters or more specifically, the very popular variable ND or fader ND filters. These have become very, very popular and for a good reason. They're very easy to adjust exposure. And uh, so this is an ND filter, a fader ND. So ND is actually simply put just sunglasses for your lens. It cuts down the amount of light entering your lens, which allows you to do things like open up your aperture and get more shallow depth of field. And the variable ND, as you can see here, as you spin it and turn the actual filter, it changes the uh, opacity of the filter. So you can, in a pinch, slap this on your camera and adjust exposure very finely, which is really nice. But what a lot of people don't know is this is actually too polarizers working against each other. And so while you're changing exposures and adding more and less ND, you're also adding essentially a polarizer to your image. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not, sometimes it's weaker, sometimes it's stronger. So you might actually, if you look carefully at your footage, notice these different looks. It almost looks like different cameras throughout your shots. And that's because as you're filming and as you adjust your exposure using this filter, you're changing how light reflects off of things. So if you're shooting an actor, you might notice you know, a lot of changes in exposure on the face, which looks very natural, and some reflections off of the face. As you change this, you're gonna lose that, you're gonna get more of it, it's gonna change. So you really need to think about that effect and how it works on your camera. The cheaper ones are even worse. Um, I've really liked the Genesis Tech, and I also own the Tiffin version. They're pretty good, and they do work really well but you need to keep that in mind. And that is why we like, and I've grown to love, you know, these static ND filters, because you stick them in there, they change the exposure, but they don't mess with, you know, polarizing effects. So that's one reason in your map box can fit on most lenses using various adapters and a rod system like this over here. Whereas a round filter, you're gonna to have to adapt it and that can get really annoying, especially if you're renting some glass or borrowing some glass or changing cameras a lot. So round filters really aren't as production friendly as square filters. Great, so now that we have that covered, let's talk about the sizes of filters. There's really a ton of different sizes, starting with smaller three by threes when it comes to square, but there's really, um, and there's also really large ones for wide angle lenses, but the two most popular sizes and the ones that you'll be working with the most are four x four filters, like this one right here, 
and 4x5.6, which we have over here. These are the two most popular sizes, and uh, the really big difference, I guess you could say, is on the 4x4, they're more affordable, because they're obviously smaller, so there's less glass. But if you go to a film set, you're most likely gonna see the larger 4x5.6 filters, and they're just more universal for cinematography. So those are the two size differences. Obviously, the larger glass gives you more coverage, and you can do cool things like if you have a special effect filter, you can put it in a matte box or a special uh, filter holder and put it on its end like so, and then you can go up and down. So there's various uses for each one. What you wanna do is kinda of pick a size that you know you're gonna stick with and then stick with it. Um, there are matte boxes, which we'll talk about in another episode that cover both of these, so you can have mixes and matches of the filters, and then you can use it on the same matte box, which is really nice. So there's two essential filter types that I wanna talk about today. One is Grad ND, which we see here, and that's just a gradual ND. So, you know, it's ND, but it's gradual across the face of the filter. And then the other is just straight up ND filters. So we already talked about why ND filters like this are better than your variable ND filters. And it's really nice to have a full set of these. And Tiffin has a fantastic one that you can get in this whole case. It has a whole bunch, these nice little tabs, so I can easily pull up you know, the particular filter that I want to use, and you have your full set. So you know when you go out on set, you have everything you need to do filtration. So when it comes to ND filters, the uses for these vary. One is just simply mathematics. You need to darken the image, you throw some ND on there. The other is if you want to shoot a shot and you want to have more shallow depth of field, you would put higher ND filters onto your lens and that would let less light in, which means you could open up your aperture and that would allow you to have more shallow depth of field. So here's a very simple example. You have a shot, everything's almost in focus. You throw some ND on there and you just add a little more shallow depth of field. And this can be very extreme or very minimal and that's the beauty of this. It's completely up to you, and these tools allow you to accomplish those images. Grad NDs have various uses. One obvious one is horizon. So if you have a shot like this, where you have a darker foreground lower in the image, but then in the sky, you have a very bright part of the image, like a sunrise, you can throw a little ND grad on that, and that's going to darken the sky while preserving the exposure of the lower part of the image but it doesn't just have to be horizons. You can use it for all different kinds of things. So the Bean is a very popular tourist attraction here in Chicago. Beautiful piece of art, and obviously you've got some wild light hitting that thing. So um, using a Grad ND, you could recover a little bit of the sky and preserve the interesting colors and the darker parts of the Bean. And that's the beauty of certain map boxes that rotate, is you can hit a corner of an image you can hit the side of an image like we'll do in a test. It's completely up to you. I went ahead and I was very curious to see, you know, why would you want to spend this much money on filters as opposed to buying something like this? This is a K-Vision filter, a lot more affordable than the Tiffin ones. So I went out, did some really basic tests, and you can see those here. So first I did a shot, a control shot, there's no filters added to this shot. So this is what the camera sees without any additional filtration. And then I took the Tiffin filter and threw it on there. And you can see a little bit of a change. And uh, you might also see, you also want to look for not just color changes, but you want to look for contrast changes. So we can see a little bit of a difference on the Tiffin. But then when I tried the K-Vision really cheap filter, there was this big shift in the contrast. It got really flat and then you also had some interesting colors going on. So that's the biggest difference between cheap and more expensive filters. You're gonna see color changes, you're going to see more dramatic contrast changes, and it can be really difficult to match. And some of you might be thinking, well, that's not a huge deal, I can add more contrast in post. The problem is when you remove the filter, add it again, you mix up your shots, you have such inconsistent footage to work with, that your final output and corrections are still not going to match up as well. Same goes for ND grads. So, so you see two different levels here. I have a 0.9 and then a 1.2 ND grad. 
And then on the bottom here, I have a cheaper resin filter. And uh, this is also a 0.9. And this one is a lot thinner, cheaper. It's kind of plasticky. It's not actual real glass. So I went ahead and did a comparison. So again, here is a control shot, shot with no filtration added. And then here is the filtration using the Tiffin Grad ND. So you can see, again, it's gonna change a little bit and it's really difficult to have zero change. But then we look over at the cheaper resin filter and we see this crazy magenta shift. So again, cheaper filters, you're gonna see funky artifacts and then more expensive ones are gonna stay truer to the original image. And of course, all this isn't taking into account sharpness. The more glass and filters you add to the front of the lens, the higher the chance of softening your image is going to be. So have to keep that in mind as well when you look closely at each of these. So to conclude, we have two different sizes, four by 5.6 and four by four. You can still use variable ND. They do have their place for certain shooting environments, but keep in mind you are adding some polarizing effects to your image when you use them. The two most popular, in my opinion, filter types are ND filters, which adjusts exposure and stop and control how much light is entering your lens. And then we have ND grads, which as the name suggests, is a gradual ND that starts with dark and goes toward light, or what's called a reverse grad, which starts in the center as dark and goes toward the edge as light. As for recommendations, I really do highly recommend and I have enjoyed shooting with the Tiffin Pro HV kit. This particular one is the 4x5.6 set, has the entire range, so in one pack you have everything you need when it comes to ND. It is a little pricey, but you don't have to buy the whole thing, you can slowly work toward these. And I don't want to come across as, you know, using cheaper filters is a sin and especially variable NDs. They have their place and if you're on a budget and you want to experiment with filters, you can use ones like the K-Vision, but it's definitely not something I'd want to use on a professional gig. Um, so something to consider, definitely an investment, but can really add a lot to your image and if you're, and if you're worried about finicking and playing with all these different things and it taking a lot of time, it is definitely worth it. I've really enjoyed the opportunity to try these different filters and um, using them over time, I've really come to appreciate and respect filtration and cinematographers that take the time to properly filter their images. So stay tuned for a bunch of matte box goodness and different tools all the way from really cheap, under $50 budget and all the way up to if you're shooting every single day and need to filter your glass, what you can use. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.